Yo, yo, yo! What's going on, peoples? We are back for another week. What's up, people news? You already know how we do it. Yes. We touch down on local, national, international news. Mm -hmm. And we bring it to you live, raw, and direct. No holding back. Straight to your face. What's going on? This is episode two of season three. Damn, three seasons. Damn, that's, that's a long time. That we is. said that last week, but just thinking about it is, is, is crazy. A lot of work we've been putting in. Yeah, man. For y'all. You know what I'm saying? We like doing this for y'all. You know, bringing the information, you know, trying to keep y'all apprised. I like that. Well. Keep, no, I'm sorry. Keep you appraised. Ah, yes. Keep you appraised of what's going on in the news and all that. So, again, this week we have a guest with us. Yes, yes, yes. Please introduce yourself. What's going on, y'all? Your girl, Lovely Hoffman, a.k.a. Black Frost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Holding it down with the brothers here today. Team Frosty in the building. <laughs> Team Frosty in the building. Boom, boom. There we go. Nice. There we go. Good to be here. Thank Th you. Thanks for coming. Yes, uh, yes. Thanks for coming. Yes, sir. So, uh, oh, how we how we wanna? Well, we have to we have to get back into the groove like we always do. So you know we gotta start off with um, some 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 black facts. Um, we always wanna celebrate um, our, our brothers and sisters from the past that that hold it held it down for us and advanced our, our community in a positive way. So tonight, um, will you mind if I read it just because since? Go ahead. All right, so um, tonight we're going to be talking about a gentleman named Buck Colbert Franklin. Uh, he was a lawyer and won the victory for black residents in 1921 uh, Tesla or Tulsa race riots. Um, Franklin was born in 1879 and was named after his grandfather, who had been an, an enslaved African of the Chickasaw family in Oklahoma. So this is probably around the area like um, Black Wall Street was during that time. Um, and if you guys don't know what Black Wall Street is, please look that up. That's um, that's when when we was popping. Not saying we're not popping now, but like there were an uh, X amount of number of doctors, black doctors, lawyers, pharmacists, store owners, you know, uh, gas station attendants. You know, like we were really that was just. To sum it all up, that was a time when the blacks supported the blacks. Facts. We, That's kept the, we kept the money, well, they kept the money in. Mm -hmm. so that money circulated in our hands. Yes, right? yes. And um, unfortunately, um, uh, a lady, I think, accused uh, a black man of sexual assault. And, and then, you know, um, she told her husband and he told his friends and so forth and a mob was formed and they came through like it was Frankenstein, pitchforks, torches, guns. And they bombed it. And they bombed it and and they completely devastated. So but not to get off track, but that's kind of, you know, kind of a little connection. But um, there is a lot of more information about uh, Buck Colbert Franklin uh, that I have written down. Um, unfortunately, I, I'm, I won't be able to read it all, but just know um, he did his thing. Um, he was a lawyer, and he, he fought for our rights and our freedoms. And so I just wanted to give him a big shout-out and a, a black fact for the day. So, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's again, it's, for me personally, it's not um, to say that black people are better or superior, you know. It, it's the fact that we don't get enough light, you know. And I'm not trying to take credit from... From other people, but hey, if, if we ain't gonna shout us out, we will. So that's that's why he. <laughs> uh, mm. I'll say, you know, and the reason why I say it is a lot of the things that we do and we use today were created by black people. Yeah. A lot of the things, as far as hair dryers, washing machines, iron, uh, ironing boards, all created by black people. I will say that, you know, we're in, in a lot of senses, we are superior. You know what I'm saying? And we touched on this for the season two in the beginning of season one. Christopher Columbus 
circled around on the ocean, destroying boats for a long time. Mm -hmm. Only way that he found this new land in which he came to was by a black man, by the Moor. Mm -hmm. The navigator. It was a navigator. Not even just the, the navigator, the captain, the cruisemen on the ship. It was the Moors who, who led him. That's right. And it's so, actually like on it at that point too, because if you go to South America, they have a, um, a lot of ethnic that in terms of being you know, on the head, in the ground, right? All those um, big, those, yeah. 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 Yo, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. And they actually had actual people in their own um, culture that they actually found. So I think it's important what you're saying in terms of like understanding our history and our, our history is so much longer and so much more rich than, you know, the school system mm -hmm. and, and then we think. So right. I think it's really essential what you're saying. I, do, and with I, that. I think it would be essential for, you know, the school systems to actually implement those facts into the history. Because, you know, when they talk about blacks, it's... All slavery, bit, really. It's all slavery or a little bit of Malcolm X, a little bit sure. of Martin Luther King. Yeah. That's it. You know, you, you, you may, depending on where you go to school at, you may get a Harriet Tubman reference. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or Maya Angelou. Yeah. Right, right. Facts. You know That's saying? facts. So, <laughs> they were also talking about how our people were world explorers. We were talking about the Moors and how mm -hmm. they actually were in Spain, right? In Cordova. And they, they developed a lot of the, um, the street life, the, um, mm. the sanitation system that they used, right? So there's a lot of research that shows, like you said, our history does not start with slavery. That is actually very like in of our history, but like our history spans four thousand years prior to that. Oh, yeah. Even further, when you really get down into the deep history and, and, and trying to like trace roots back, it goes. Mm -hmm. We have a rich history, and, and you made me think of something. Uh, there's a gentleman um, on YouTube. Uh, he's from London, Black brother. I think his name is Robert Wright. Okay. Um, but he had posted a video on YouTube a while ago, and, and I didn't post it, and I'm gonna try to post it if I can find it again. Um, but he brought up uh, an amazing point. And he was like, history is very important because if you know where you came from, you'll have more pride in, in where you're at now. Like if you know whose shoulders you were standing on and, and how we got there and how powerful and beautiful we are as a people, across all nations, you know what I'm saying? Like, you would have a better, you would love yourself more. Right. But because we don't know our history, and like you said, our history is rich. Slavery was a well, traumatic it's point. More in, recent, yeah, it's recent and traumatic, but that's all they have us focus on. If we, okay, I'm not saying to disregard slavery, because that's how we got here. That's what made us present, but put that aside. Yeah. Let's see what happened before slavery. Mm -hmm. You know, when we get to uh, Mansa Musa, if I pronounce yes, his name yes, right, yes. one of one, the. I'm sorry. Let me put that. Not the the richest man mm -hmm. in history. Yeah. You know, in, in the palaces mm -hmm. and, and the I don't think universities. I, universities mm -hmm. and uh, I think it was aqueducts, but hanging gardens. That didn't start in Greece, like you or Rome, that you may have that they teach you. And don't get me wrong, their stuff is is dope. It's still here now, but that's not the origin. And that's the truth. I'm that's sorry. Truth. I'm sorry. But you know what, though, just to say one more thing, because you guys are all point. I, I like your energy. But also, we look at like so-called Black History Month. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, our children are taught, and we're taught as adults that like, oh, this is the first to do this and the first to do that, and it's actually not true. Like. We, we're actually like, um, what we're doing is that um, we're continuing this false idea that we're waiting for it to be validated by being the first to do this in America, where when you look at like ancient history, you look at Ipei Isu, you look at Timbuktu of San Kavi, these are some of the first universities. You look at Imhotep, he's mm -hmm. a multi-genius, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was an astronomer, he was a historian, you know, he was a mathematician. So when we say, oh, the first to do this, the first to do that, Maybe in this country that was documented, but like right. our history predates that. So I, I think that's so important when you talk about like, slavery. Our history does not start with slavery. And Malcolm X always said that. Right, right, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. right. But but you know, hold on, I think we should I think we should tone it down a little bit because you get too rich into what the people of color have done. You know, 
bad things happen, and it's just facts. <laughs> what do you mean? It's facts. So they don't, they don't like, like you said, like you said, like you said, right? Exactly. Like you said, Malcolm X always said that. Malcolm X was bringing the truth and bringing the light to the people. Mm-hmm. And what happened? They, you know what I'm saying? The 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 white man got to get into somebody's head. Somebody of our own kind to actually assassinate. Mm-hmm. But you have to look at the research of that too, because whenever you see something like that happen, you get to, it, it's, it's deeper than that. It's not that simple. Like you look at like the FBI's Call and Tell Pole program. Like, oh, don't even. Okay. Man, listen. Let me so put my little foil to, hat on real quick. <laughs> you have to question everything, and everyone who doesn't look like you is, is not necessarily your brother. Like a lot of times, you, uh, people are manipulated, people are blackmailed. This. But who, the question becomes, who was the main person behind it? But this is that you get. Right. See, again, it's wait, just wait. like it's just like when I dropped the jewel on you about Dick Gregory. Yeah. If you ever watch that video. Um, well, let the people know real quick. And there's one thing I want to say after that, but let the people know what you what you mean by the Dick Gregory video. All right. So when I say the Dick Gregory video, um, I'm not gonna say it, but I'm gonna say what I feel. I feel like uh, the MLK assassination. Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory. Oh, I didn't hear that. So you gotta watch the video. They was yeah, running me. Yeah, they there's was running me. It, it was. It, it blew Him my mind. MLK. Dick Gregory and MLK. They were like running me. So if you ever watch this video of his assassination, two seconds. Yeah, there's a video. Okay. Two like two seconds before he was shot, Dick Gregory. Yeah. And uh, Martin Luther King was assassinated. So what, what should he have done? Well, I mean, I'm not saying that he should have done anything, but a he lot said, of people think a lot he of had people knowledge. He had foreknowledge of what was going to happen. So you never know. Now this happened what in a balcony and where was it? In, in Memphis. He was on a balcony. So you never know. He could have been in his hotel room getting he was ready. A hotel he, he, he could have been in his hotel room getting ready for his speech, getting himself together. Did, you never know. It's all speculation. Dick Gregory. Hey, let's go. Let's go stand out on the balcony. So y'all stand inside. Like, how did they get to the? Balcony? How did they get to the balcony? He's about to go and do a speech. How did he end up on the balcony? Now you standing. I'm standing side by side with you. Like, yeah. So. Yeah, do, 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 do. you know, you might see a clock, you might look at your watch, and it's like, I'm gonna slide on over here to the side, yeah. and then you get gunned down. Well, that means you have a skillful person, because, like, if someone's gonna be throwing, like, shooting at you, and I'm next to you, I'm not gonna be next to you, because there's a chance that I might get shot. So yeah. I haven't, I've never seen that before. You gotta, yeah, that. you gotta, you gotta, so real that. quick, you gotta find it, you gotta he got me going, he got me going. Now, you gotta research there's, it, man, there's, like, there's some <laughs> other information, there's, well, I won't get into that. I won't. I won't touch it. That'll be for another show. I don't want to get deep because there's some other information about that. You, you, when you brought my, my, t- I'm gonna take my tinfoil hat off. I'm sorry, y'all. I took it off. We won't. We won't get into conspiracy theories. But, but real quick before before we actually yeah. keep going with the show. Um, before we before we get into the news. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Real quick. Um, I want to give a big big shout out. Um, homie. Don't crucify me if I pronounce your last name wrong. Um, I'm actually uh, working on a movie script uh, with my homeboy, Muhammad Awanjawi, out of Senegal, Africa. We got some, uh, we've been working on this script uh, for the past maybe month and a half now. Um, It's gonna be, hopefully, if we get everything right, sometime next summer. Um, But definitely look out, uh, check him out. Um, I'll post a link to where you can check some of his uh, videos. He do he does music videos, short films. Um, he's done a couple music videos for a couple uh, big artists, uh, African uh, rappers and singers out in Senegal. Um, so I have a link and all that so you can check it out. But uh, that's my guy, Muhammad. We doing it. Uh, he wanted me to shout him out. I wanted to shout him out. So I'm just doing that. Big up. So y'all definitely stay tuned for that. Um, you know, we trying to be trying to be international over here at 323 Productions. So um, stay stay tuned for, for more information about that. Let's get into it. Right, let's get it. Let's get into the guest. Yes. Because I know. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's get let's get into our guest <laughs> like because you know what I'm saying. Like you know, I, I 
you know, I, I, like she said, I love the energy. Yeah, the energy. To have somebody, Fire. you know what I'm saying, that has just as much in or more knowledge than we do about some things. That's always a plus. I love it. You know I what love I'm saying? learning. Because we've had some guests that was like, what? <laughs> that, that, what? Nah, that's, so that's a positive. So it's that always. Means we all ride in the same way. Right. And that's good. So, you know, tell us, tell the people a little bit about yourself. What is it that you do? What is it that you do? Okay, well, first of all, thank you for having me um, on the show. Um, so, my name is Lovely Hoffman, and I am a singer, songwriter, educator, and activist. Um, some of my most recent work that people have um, may be aware of is um, I did a song called My Black is Beautiful. Um, and my black is beautiful. Um, went viral. Thank you. <laughs> this went viral. I, I listened to it today. Oh, thank you. I listened to it today, and um, the he sent me the link to his album, and I listened okay. to my black is beautiful. The, well, I I don't know how, if I sent the right because I only I think I only was able to send you two links. So black is beautiful, and then the first song right above that, and I totally forgot okay, the name. Yeah, watch the video. It wasn't a video. It was, it was on SoundCloud. It was on. It was. I sent them the sound. I sent them a SoundCloud the video. I, I will search it. I will we're gonna, search we're gonna it. have but to watch it before we go. It was a really good song. Yes, and sir. It, 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 you know, honestly, I don't mean to cut you off, but for those who are into that kind of music, because this is what I got from it, it, it kind of reminded me of listening to uh, India. Kind of and I love Indy yeah. Ari, by the way. Definitely I'm just saying, dope. she's yeah, dope. Definitely yeah. Dope. Definitely someone who I love. So it's a song that basically um, forces us to embrace our beauty and who we are as black women. Um, so basically, when I wrote the song, I wrote the song because as an educator for over 10 years, I would see many of my young black students um, teasing each other based off of their hair texture based off of the color of their skin or the hue of their skin. Have you guys ever heard, ever seen yeah, young people? Yeah, I've dealt with oh, them. When you were young, have you ever witnessed young people like, black, black or black? Yeah, black, of course. Or yeah. snappy headed, was, all yeah. that stuff? I was a part of that whole light okay. skin, dark skin. Right, I was, the, I was okay. the light skin guy. Uh -oh. Well, that, that was the purpose of the song because like, really that had an impact on a lot of young girls that I taught and I could also relate to what many of these young girls were dealing with, so. I wrote this song called My Black is Beautiful and um, one Saturday I went to school and I asked 12 of my students to come to school. To be and nice. um, we were ba basically able to reenact the ex their experience, um, the experiences that they go through around self-esteem, about self-love. Marcus Garvey says, um, with confidence, you have won before you have even started. Mm -hmm. And I believe that as an educator and as an uh, organizer and activist, so um, since re releasing the video, it received over 3 million views on social media. It was on BET. It was on, um, I was on the Tom Joyner Morning Show, which is pretty That's awesome. my guy right there. Yeah, I was on the Tom That's Joyner Morning up. Show, and I met some pretty phenomenal people. I was also able to write an op-ed for CNN around um, wow. the importance of holistic education because the school system right now focuses so much on standardized testing, and mm -hmm. it's, it's so much more than that. Like, education is about um, empowering the mind, body, and souls of our children. So um, I was able to write an op-ed on that, which is like one of my like greatest moments. Um, I also was um, featured on many other outlets and was able to share my story with so many people. Um, so that was like one of the greatest highlights of my career. And I was inspired by people like NDRE, Lauren Hill. Um, another song I did is a Kwanzaa song. I'm not yes. sure if you've all seen that. That's yeah. actually how, I was gonna say that. That's okay. actually how I, I, I became came to know who you are as a singer yes, um, because it was right around, I think it was the first day of Kwanzaa that okay. you released the song. Okay. Um, Ujuma, U Umoja. Umoja, yes, mm -hmm. yes. And so when I heard I'm like, oh, snap. Like, for one, you don't see songs like that for mm -hmm. Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. That's right. And like, it's almost kind of like, well, how come they ain't no songs for Thanksgiving? You know what I'm saying? Like, you got all these Christmas music. What about Thanksgiving? So when I seen I have, them, a, I have a question. <laughs> well, okay. Question. You see the song. <laughs> I have a question about the song. Okay. Was it sang in English or Swahili? It was, sing, it, was, it was sung in English and also Swahili because Swahili is it. Swahili, key Swahili is the official language of the Pan-African community. So as African people, we know our languages was taken away from us. So as Pan-Africans trying to re 
attempting um, to reconnect to our African ancestry, we um, have taken on the language of uh, Kiswahili, which is a language that's like a non-ethnic language, so it's not, it does not belong to one ethnic group, and it's actually shared among, among many ethnic groups in East Africa. It was actually nice. established as a trading language, that's why multiple ethnic groups speak speak it. So when Milan, Dr. Milan Karinga created Kwanzaa and did research on Kwanzaa, he decided to use Kiswahili for all the principles. And, um, that's what's up. I didn't, I didn't know that part. Wow. So as, when you say trading, like, spices and, and different things like that. Okay. Resources. Okay, that's what's up. Mm-hmm. That, see, we learned it. Yeah. I like so that. That song did well. And, and a lot of people, like, I get so much love from educators throughout the country. Like, even from Japan. Like, I'm trying to teach my students about um, American holidays. And there's no songs about Kwanzaa. I love this song. Can you send me this? And I want to purchase this. So it, it shows that there really is a demand. Mm-hmm. Um, for the, these types of things, and I think it's important for us because, um, as I said, like I think it's I think that when we talk about like what's needed in our community, I think one of the things that's going to empower us and bring us where we need to be is us embracing our, our roots and mm-hmm. not just the history, but also like the values and the principles. Um, so a lot of the principles of Kwanzaa are universal African principles that ha- that uh, many ethnic groups across the continent, ethnic groups across the continent. Um, for me, um, as, a, as a black woman, one of the things that transformed my life was um, when I traveled to Africa. I had an opportunity to travel to Africa three times. And nice. That's on my book. so transformative in terms of me knowing who I am and um, feeling empowered and really loving, really, really loving who I am and embracing who I am as a, uh, as a black woman and standing in my power. I mean, it really it, it transforms that and, and, and um, getting rid of the perm in my head. Right? <laughs> you know, because I feel like... Right, like and you see so many women doing it now, so it's a, it's a beautiful thing, because right? we, we are beautiful. But yeah. For women, a, a big part of that is actually like embracing our natural hair. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. Power. I hope y'all learning got something. Power I hope in the building. Come on, y'all, got got power y'all need to be building. snapping fingers, taking. Right. Yeah. right. That's power awesome. In the building. That's. I wish, I wish more black women would embrace their power. I, 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 I do. And I think we see a lot of women doing that too, which is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I think we're, we're seeing that sort of revolution happen. happen. Um, and that's, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I'm all for it. Because I think it, it just like, <laughs> It's it's a, it's not just like I said. It's not just about like history. This like really a spiritual revolution. Like to me, it's it's all about the core. It's all about here, you know. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Like that's power. So I have some new music coming out too. Yeah, we gonna well, let's keep February. talking about the music. So what? All right. So I guess we're gonna kind of get into some basic interview questions. Yes, and, I, and you actually touched on, on everything. some yeah <laughs> everything right. So. I guess dang, you, you, so you actually it's, touched on everything. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a good question. What was it or who was it that made you want to give your gift to the song? So, my father's a minister and I've had been singing in church since I was very young. So, I've always been um, told that like, my voice was a gift to God. Um, but in terms of me, Understanding that with art, there's a level of responsibility that comes with that. Um, people like Lauren Hill, my one of my great, like all-time favorites, Nina Simone. Love her. She said, um, "An artist's work must reflect the times and condition of the people in which they live." Wow. Um, and Paul Robeson, who's also amazing, he said that an artist's work can either be used to empower the people or further oppress the people. So. Um, those are the types, like, my, in terms of my mission, in terms of my philosophy as an artist, of course I think about love, because love is relevant and love mm-hmm. is, like, timeless, but I think it's important for us to use, um, as artists, whether you're a painter, whether you're a singer, whether you're a hip-hop artist, I think it's also important for us to use our gifts to, um, enlighten the world, because I feel like art is a universal language, so because it's a universal language, um, we have the power, the super, the superpower to kind of, like, to reach so many people, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So 
one of the songs that I did that, like, I, just to give you an example, like, I recall, um, you know, there was like a, in terms of black men and black women being murdered by police officers, that's always happened, right? There's so much research. The difference now is that a lot of this stuff is documented because we have a all cell phone. These, these right here. We have our cell phones, <laughs> we have all these things. So I recall seeing the murder of Eric Gardner. You guys saw the, uh, that murder when his brother was literally choked to death by the police. Choked out. Like That's literally sad. choked to death. Yeah. And that sad. was so, like, I feel like that was such a turning point for me because I just had to do something at that point. Like, I remember seeing that video and just, just being in so much agony. So I went, I remember writing my song, Black Lives Matter, going to the piano and composing this piece. And um, that, was, that was really transformative for me. Since releasing that, I had the opportunity to share it um, at, music, at um, film festivals in San Francisco, Chicago. Nice. But when I went to San Francisco, the Bay Area, I actually met the uncle of, of Oscar Grant, the brother who was murdered. Wow. In, That's a train in, station. Yes. And that brother. That movie was oh. deep. Uh, Interville Station. Yeah, Fruitville Station. Fruitville, Fruitville Station. I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of, a, right. don't, don't, Fruitville don't mind me. I'm over here being like, yeah, that was. Yeah, was yeah that was. But we, nah, we all on the same page. Right, so right. when I met that brother and the work that he's doing with other um, women and mothers who, and fathers who've experienced, um, you know, the murder and police brutality, is it was just amazing. Like, the brother was just beautiful. Um, his wife was amazing. And that was really and just being able to share share that work and to meet someone who actually um, has has gone through what I was thinking about and to to get him to say you know it's beautiful work great work like that's just that's just there's no there's no other like there's no other feeling in the world that can describe how I felt just meeting him and just wow. just even right my black is beautiful you know in Kwanzaa like just seeing like people's reaction to the music and hearing people's testimonies and how it touched them like to me like I always say like if, God has been so good to me with my art and my talent that like, if I don't live, a, live another day, like, I just feel like I'm, not, I'm still so fulfilled mm -hmm. because that's what life is all about. It's about touching someone. How can you mm -hmm. touch someone? How can mm -hmm. you impact someone? Like, why, why are you here? It's not about you. You know, as an artist, being an artist isn't selfless. Nobody's selfless as an artist. <laughs> Part of that is making sure you speak to the people, the hearts and minds of the people. I'm going on and on. Nah, that's, no, no. We, we, we need to hear that. We need to hear that. Yeah, cause I mean, because, you know, him and I, you know, we both, we kind of share, not kind of, but we share the same views on a, on a lot of things. And music, music is, is, is one of them. Yeah. Like, you know, before my, before the engine went in my car. The like, what? My engine, my engine blew in my car. So I'll be, you know, I'll be cruising and I'll listen to a lot of old school hip hop. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a uh, little bit of the new school, but not so much for the words, just for the bass and the melody and the tone. And, you know, he'll get in like, yo, bro, turn this on. He'll give me some most deaf, some talent, quality. Yo, like, yo no, most deaf, black, black star? Listen, yo, y'all need to come listen, back. We need to listen to <laughs> You know, say we be cruising, listening to jazz, but mm -hmm. I, you know, I feel as though one of the things that you said was, um, you know, from the quotes was, "Music can, you know, help or rather oppress." And I feel like this is what today's music is doing, you know, to our children. Mm -hmm. We know better, yeah. but they don't. And, and, and to kind of go off what he said is, um, so we are, we have a we have another show called the Boogie Podcast, um, and we were actually at the uh, House of Blues a um, couple couple months ago, and to hear, well, in in general when we when we have different music artists, local artists, they'll talk about like the negative side. So to have an artist talk about the positive side and the, and the love. And trying to get out that positive message is refreshing. 